Good morning, warriors. Welcome to the You Movement. I am B. And I wanted to hop on today and talk a little bit about the adventures of an unaware empath. Many of us, if you're in my age group, uh, grew up never hearing the term empath before um, or the term highly sensitive person. HSP. Those just weren't terms. Neither was autism or uh, spectrum or uh, ADD, ADHD. Uh, all these kinds of phrases weren't in our vernacular in the early 70s and 80s. I was born in 72. And instead, we were told things like, stop being so sensitive. Stop being so dramatic. And um, you're losing it. Those types of phrases. And so we thought whatever it was we were doing, we were picking up on, uh, we were reflecting on other people's energies, uh, was in some way a bad thing, uh, a negative trait and uh, potentially got us in a whole load of trouble. And this life mission that we have found ourselves on here down on Earth School uh, came with one prime directive, which is go know thyself. And so we live our lives uh, trying to figure out uh, who we are. And this uh, spiritual awakening uh, uh, speeds that process up and you start to go through a very long process an arduous process of discovering first who you are not uh, and then uh, who you actually are because when you can know who you are <laughs> you can navigate a lot easier in the world and the problem is I didn't uh, know who I was. I had no idea who I was. Uh, I knew who I was told I should be, and I was directed to be by the primary narcissist in my life, being my mother, who scripted me as the scapegoat, the problem child, uh, and uh, any number of other labels that were placed on me over the years. You're unattractive, you're uh, not intelligent, you're, uh, you know, mentally disabled um, or disturbed. Those were two that I got told I was uh, quite frequently. Uh, I was never told uh, you are an empath. And so uh, as uh, somebody who was born an empath and then uh, experienced a lot of trauma, that empathy gets exacerbated and uh, it, it's like, one muscle keeps going on overdrives and what happens is empathy turns into a, an exacerbated state of hyper vigilance and reading the energy so that you don't get in shit <laughs> oh no that facial expression i know what that means that subtle sigh that little breath that just feeling the energy and um i can well imagine uh being why I was so irritating uh, to somebody because empaths are known uh, for shining the light on the situation. Even though they're not aware of it, you're not consciously aware that you're doing it. You just know that you uh, trigger people. And I can remember as a child uh, standing in the face of this wrathful, raging energy at me and I would call it out that would get me into a load of hurt. But I would call it out as the truth teller, as the, this is cruel, you are mean. <laughs> yeah, th those types of sentences uh, didn't go over very well, even though they were 100% the truth. You know, you, you would, I would get um, severely punished, uh, you know, uh, spankings. Uh, and I recently saw a meme, you know, downplaying the, the, the abuse that is spankings. And uh, I'm going to call out again that spankings is most definitely abuse, especially when you're getting a bare ass and welts left on it. 
And then I was isolated into my bedroom uh, for hours afterwards. And I used to write little uh, hate mail and send it out underneath my door uh, saying, you know, you're basically calling it out saying, this is mean, this is torture, this is, you know, whatever I could spell at the time. Um, I didn't know until I was an adult that she actually kept those as trophies uh, for a long period of time. They were her rewards. She reveled in them. Um, but when you're a child, you don't know um, that you're doing these things. And then what happens is you also get gaslit. So an empath is highly intuitive and has many skills. And I mentioned in my last video that I am an emotional empath. I am a physical empath. I feel things in my body. Uh, and it's not like these skills just... Uh, uh, came out of nowhere a couple years ago. What happened is a couple years ago in my awakening, they came back online. I was already born with them. I was already born with clairsentience, uh, some telepathy, um, clairvoyance, uh, uh, clairaudience, uh, all of these clairs, uh, and they would get me in trouble. As, as an empath, they would get me in trouble. So I had to shut these things down, repress, repress, and, and push within. So it's kind of no wonder when you repress something, you depress it. And then I suffered a lifetime of depression because I was constantly in a state of uh, depressing the energies uh, and my intuitive hits on things. As well as the fact is when you're in a narcissistic environment and you are an empath uh, who has highly intuitive things and you're calling out truths that people don't want to see and you're calling uh, reflecting back energies, uh, the shadow energies that people don't want to see in themselves, what they do is they gaslight you. And uh, I've done videos in the past about gaslighting, but, but gaslighting is basically telling you that your reality isn't reality. And this has been an energy that has plagued me my entire life, is being gaslit. And uh, I'm, I'm done with that. I, I can pick it up now and it's, uh, it, it, it's, one of the things that upsets me probably more than anything is uh, people's attempt to gaslight me. Because uh, what gaslighting does uh, is it disables uh, a person's ability to intuitively know what they know to be true and, and makes them second guess themselves and uh, their reading of the situation because they're being told. So if you're saying to somebody, you know, you're being mean, uh, and they're saying, no, I'm not. You're being overly sensitive. They're reflecting back to you after they've hit you or raged at you. Then you question your own sanity. You, well, if it's not the way that I perceive it to be, um, then what is it? And so you're walking around in a state of confusion and long-term gaslighting does uh, create actual brain damage uh, because, and they have done scans on this where your amygdala uh, gets uh, larger in size uh, so that you can be in a more hyper vigilant alert state constantly because uh, that is for survival and protecting yourself because you no longer trust yourself to be able to perceive what is danger and what isn't danger. And so you continually place yourself in dangerous situations because you're told they're not dangerous you continually reenact uh, that type of energy, uh, which is called reenactment abuse, uh, because you believe that whatever that energy is, is safe because you've been told it's safe and you believe what other people say over your own intuitive guidance and your own uh, ability to uh, sense uh, a situation for what it is. And so empaths, uh, often find themselves in situations uh, where they are presented with the opposing energy on that spectrum of narcissistic energy and they replay that out over and over and over again in their lives in job situations, in friendships, in marriages uh, where 
it eventually gets so bad until you learn the lesson of, wait a second, uh, I need to start trusting what I feel. I need to start uh, believing that my reality is my reality because when you shut down uh, your sensory systems, your ability to perceive safety, you become reliant on other people and therefore uh, codependency uh, is born and that codependency is what binds and bonds uh, an empath to a narcissist because an empath is like, I think this is happening and let's discuss it and the narcissist goes, no, it's not, let's not. And uh, they turn it around so everything's being constantly turned around. So if you have found yourself in life experiencing things or knowing things and then going, well, maybe that's not what it is. Well, maybe I should give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, maybe it's something else. Here, let me check with my counsel. I'm gonna call this friend. What, what do you think of this situation? I'm gonna call this friend. What do you think of this situation? I'm gonna call this friend. What do you think I should do? Uh, so you're constantly negating your personal power to the counsel of others. So now we have a disabled um, sensory system. Now we have a disabled power center. Uh, and now we have a lack of boundaries uh, and uh, a codependency uh, in your bottom three chakras. And we have a zero sense of authenticity because we're constantly adapting ourselves uh, so that uh, when we are in these uh, abusive energies, we're like tiptoeing, people pleasing, dancing on eggshells uh, so that we can alter ourselves so that we don't experience the negative experiences because we've been told that they're a good person, they're not a bad person. We've been told that this job is a beneficial job, not a, a detrimental job. So learning uh, the lessons that uh, are associated with breaking the paradigm of uh, for the empath uh, and getting themselves into a place of freedom and safety. So first, breaking the paradigm of, of safety and, and getting safe means going no contact and it means uh, being in isolation so that you can re-establish uh, and create healthy boundaries uh, build up your power center back up so you trust and have faith in your own opinions about things re connect with your own sense of self and who you actually are and what is actually truth and what is actually reality uh, in in third eye energy and, and rely on the counsel of divine as opposed to relying on the counsel of, of a whole bunch of other people to establish. Uh, so it's the realignment of every single one of your chakras uh, is affected when you are an empath that has been living your life in a, a situation of gaslighting. And uh, it's like your entire energetic system is, is becomes out of whack. So on this awakening path, as I've been getting to know myself more and understanding what it actually means to be an empath, and I used to push that term away. I used to, because I thought it meant something like, oh, I, I'm too sensitive, I'm too this, I'm too that. And instead of uh, understanding, I needed to like bring that into my heart space and own it as who I am so that I could learn the appropriate uh, things uh, so that I could protect myself. Just pre pre pretending something isn't uh, doesn't keep you safe. <laughs> Accepting what is uh, is what's going to keep you safe. So root chakra energy is being safe and secure and that requires sacral chakra energies of healthy boundaries of knowing when to say no of knowing um that uh this isn't mine to fix this isn't my responsibility these uh you know because we're constantly in an energy of trying to fix what's outside of us so that we can feel safe inside of us uh, because that codependency means energetically we've become uh dependent on the other person uh, for telling us that we're okay. So I need to make you okay so I can be okay. You had a bad day at work, how can I fix it? Yeah, you did, you're angry, how can I fix it? You're this, how can I fix it? 
Uh, so uh, breaking that cycle requires uh, time alone and time on your own, which is why on this awakening path, many of us uh, who resonate with the term empath are put into this isolation tank, so to speak, to uh, recalibrate who you are. Uh, and then, so when the energy starts to flow up into that empowerment center, we uh, disable the fear program that runs the f fear of being alone, the fear of rejection, the fear of um, or any number of fears uh, can come up and we get into a more empowered place of saying, this doesn't work for me. So, well, what is me? Who is me? What works for me? It has to be a, a period of time where you are sitting in uh, certain energies. Does this shirt, you know, simple decisions. Is this shirt something that I want to wear? Or, you know, am I buying these outfits because I think that I'm going to look better and fit in better? You know, fear of rejection. So s simple things like your wardrobe choices. Like I, I live in men's uh, t-shirts because they're comfortable. I don't know why women's t-shirts can't come with sleeves, but for the longest time, I wouldn't have done that. I, I wouldn't have done that because I didn't think it was like appropriate and I needed to fit in and I needed to look a certain way. And I had, you know, uh, and now I'm going to do me. And so learning who me is, uh, requires, uh, some trial and error. And, uh, if you look back through the last three years uh, on this, uh, awakening, that my uh, the, the YouTube channel, uh, it's hilarious because you go back three years ago, and I've been doing this three years now, you go back three years ago, oh geez, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing it, for me now to see some of uh, the outfits and the looks that I was trying to like, uh, you know, but whatever, you're trying different things on and letting things go. Uh, recalibrating the heart space uh, after uh, because uh, empathy and being an empath means uh, you have an abundance of empathy for those outside of you uh, which is often lacking in an energy of uh, uh, compassion and self-love and self-care and all of these things and so I needed to cultivate a balancing of that energy and that's why heart center is uh, often depicted as a cross because uh, that is where it all meets. Uh, alignment of all the chakras, as well as balancing masculine and feminine energy, balancing the give and take. When I used to work uh, as uh, in a cancer center, uh, one of the things that I noticed is there was a, a, a constant theme that seemed to happen that a lot of my clients that suffered from breast cancer I was uh, a Reiki, doing Reiki for um, uh, a cancer center and um, uh, is that a lot of the women that developed breast cancer were notorious people pleasers, a lot of empaths. I'm going to give and 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 I'm not going to receive, I'm not going to, uh, so I'm completely out of balance between that uh, masculine and, and masculine and feminine energy of give and receive. You need to be in balance of that. So the empath needs to learn, A, you know, when you accept the fact that you're an empath with an overabundant heart chakra, you, you need to bring it back into balance and start learning to love the fuck out of yourself. And so that's why I created the ABLE program. And if you don't know about the ABLE program, I have a playlist for that. But basically it is, you know, achieve one thing every single day, because little steps along the way, after 365 days of doing something, uh, you will create change. Uh, B, uh, bliss. So you need to let go of the negative energies. Uh, and when I say let go, I mean process through the negative, the, the lower energies, I shouldn't say negative, the lower energies, the lower vibrations. That means processing through your repressed, all those repressed we shoved down all those emotions because we were told we were being too sensitive. So all those things that are been shoved down, you need to release, uh, you need to uh, process through, you need to cry the tears, you need to experience the grief, you need to, uh, you know, allow that inner child to, to express themselves. And as you do that, what we're doing is we're working up the emotional frequencies, eventually moving into, you know, all the rage and the anger that was reasonable. Uh, when you were being abused, uh, anger is a reasonable response to re abuse. Uh, you need to process through that. 
and move yourself up into like the energies of forgiveness which begins with forgiving self uh, and uh, and then all the uh, harmony, peace, balance, eventually working our way up to the energy of bliss. So A, B, L, love the fuck out of yourself. If you're not loving the fuck out of yourself, I have done many videos uh, on the detriment of not loving yourself. That is the root cause of all disease as far as I am concerned. It is uh, the deficit that is the birthplace from trauma is we learn not that we or we believe uh, and we take on the programming that says we're unlovable, we're unworthy, we're undeserving and uh, you need to learn to bring that back into balance and into harmony and love, 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 love the fuck out of yourself. Love your body. If you're not loving on your body. Uh, then that's a flag that you're not loving yourself. If you're not loving on your emotions and letting your emotions be expressed, then you're not loving on yourself. If you're not loving in your mind and you're saying uh, negative things or calling yourself names or anything like that, then you're not uh, loving on yourself. And if you're not listening to your own intuitive guidance and following your own life's mission and purpose, then you're not loving on yourself. And E, uh, for Abel is all about exercise and not just any exercise, it's exercise in alignment and uh, in balance, uh, which is why uh, I highly recommend if you're in a starting place uh, of trying to uh, love the fuck out of your body, you begin with getting yourself into perfect alignment and doing some aligned walking, which is what I call it, is getting into perfect posture. I have a playlist on that. Uh, and then going for a walk. The, the point of it is getting your posture. You have to be in correct posture. Energy travels up the spine, and as it travels up the spine, it will uh, clear out and help assist you shifting uh, all your weight. If you're not doing any exercise in alignment, uh, then you are blocking the flow of natural energies. So other types of activities that you could potentially do are any types of martial arts because they're all about being in correct, correct posture or uh, alignment. So Tai Chi, Qi Gong, or any of the kind of fighty ones. Um, as well as yin yoga, stretching, stretching, stretching. There, you have to stretch. You have to get down on the ground. I'm not talking about any other yogas because uh, I believe that they can be very dangerous if you are out of shape and you are, you know, older up in years like me and have been walking around all uh, holding everything in and depressing everything for a long period of time. So get down on the ground and do some yin yoga or just gentle stretching because you need to have to realign uh, not only your muscles, uh, you know, your first your spine, then your muscles, then your fascia. Uh, and so if you're having a lot of aches and pains and difficulties in your body uh, through this process, uh, stretching, releasing, and doing body work uh, through trigger point therapy and the rest is what's going to get you from where I was to where I am and or anywhere there in between. Uh, so uh, I had to learn, and in that now it's been three or four years I've been doing uh, the ABLE program, which then moved into a, a period of time where I was doing a lot more resting and a lot more other uh, activities to help keep me uh, learning and releasing and healing and doing all of this work. I've been That's what I've been doing, is healing my life. I've been unfucking my life for years now. <laughs> Eventually, uh, uh, I'll get there, I, I assume. Uh, but on this process, uh, I have learned uh, more and more and more and more about who I am and what it means uh, to be an empath and trying to balance uh, all of that energies so that I can be in greater authenticity uh, because the goal is know thyself, but also be thyself. What's the point in knowing yourself if you don't get to be who you are? And I was never given the right to be myself. So learning that I get to just be, be, uh, his, it has been a journey in itself. And, and then finally, of course, you know, trusting uh, your intuitive hits and trusting these things. And, and I had zero self-awareness as I went out into the world and had interactions with people 
that I never understood uh, why I would ruffle people up the wrong way. Because when you're receiving intuitive hits, and I don't know if this happens to you, but what would often happen to me is sometimes I would just blurt things out. And, and uh, you know, whether that's being neurodivergent or on the spectrum or being uh, clairvoyant uh, or telepathic, it, it all kind of merges together. It's hard to identify, well, wh why did that happen? And I'll see somebody's facial expression go and I'm like, oh shit, I shouldn't have said that. What, what, like, did, did I say something wrong? But what I actually did is intuitively, I knew something that then irritated uh, their shadow energy. And then it would be like, ah, but because I was self-aware and uh, unaware, self, un, because I was not self-aware, uh, I would just be like, oh no, I've done something wrong. I've, uh, I'm sorry, what did I do? And then gaslighting would immediately hit. Well, no, that's not why I did this, you know, because I'd pick, are, are you, are you putting that fence up? Because this literally actually happened to me. Are you? We, I used to have a neighbor and we had a fence uh, that we would cross in between each other. And all of a sudden the fence was, boards were up. And I was like, did I do something wrong? And they're like, no, why would you say that? You know, like, and I, I was like, okay, well, what happened? And then all of a sudden we weren't really talking anymore. So instead of just telling me whatever it was that I, I did or said that triggered them, uh, when you trigger people, they're not going to say, hey, you're right. <laughs> they're not uh what instead they're gonna say you know uh why did you do that or they're gonna gaslight the situation they're gonna twist it around and, and uh, that's what happens when you aggravate uh people's uh shadow energies and that's what empaths do it's like we're walking around with a giant flashlight attached to our forehead you know like and, and we're just shining the light on people's stuff and, and uh, they don't like it they, they, they don't like it at all and so it's not like they're asking for you, uh, which is the good side of when you become self-aware uh, and you stand in your power and you shine your light and you let those uh, who are you are aggravating leave. And that's why there's a mass exodus on a spiritual awakening path, because the brighter your light shines, the more empowerment you become and the more in truth you become, the more aggravating you are to certain peoples. Uh, and that's okay because you're also uh, become a lighthouse to your peoples, uh, to the peoples that want your help, the peoples that resonate with you, the peoples that look at your skills and say, oh, thank God, can you help me with this situation? I don't know what to do about it. You know, what, what's your intuitive hit? And then all of a sudden you're like me and you're doing readings and you're getting private call clients that are saying, hey, can you, can you assist me with this? So you've shifted from a position of being unaware to self-aware. And when you go from unaware, you are aggravating people and sending out energies uh, that annoy people because they're not ready to deal with the truths that you see, that you intuit, that you telepathically know, the hits that you get. And so instead, th those are conflict situations. And I spent 50 years of my life in this energy of not understanding. But then the more self-aware I became on this path, uh, all of a sudden others would come in and go, hey, can you help me? I need this, I need that. I Yes, oh, you, you seem to understand what you're talking about. And for a stretch, you're like, what is happening? Have I gone through a portal into like the twilight zone? Like, this is so weird. It is very weird. Uh, that shift that happens when you go from being um, unaware into self-aware uh, energies as an empath, as a light worker, uh, as somebody that is being pushed and propelled into their own uh, life's purpose and life's mission. So now my gifts are not things that I repress. Uh, my gifts are things that I'm like, yes, I know that's gaslighting. You're not fooling me this time. I'm making myself somewhere safe. You go, hey, I got an. I, I can answer that question for you. I have an intuitive hit about it. And this is what I think. And people seek your counsel. Uh, so if you are needing some help uh, as an empath, and there are many types of empaths out there, and uh, it's not just one thing, and you, or you have spent your life being called uh, too sensitive or 
uh, too dramatic or any of these other types of things and you're struggling now with the energies of irritating people and lots of people leaving and why do why does it always end up like this uh, and you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one with me to discuss this uh, I will happily turn on my intuitive uh, knowings uh, and to assist you on your path as well. The way to book a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with me is in the description below. If you would like a card read uh, and see what spirit has to say about this situation, uh, I can do that as well. And uh, the way to do that will be in the description below as well. And if you would like to join the Spiritual uh, Warrior Support Group that I have over on Facebook, the way to do that is also in the description below so that you can talk to other spiritual warriors that are on this path that might be facing similar issues as you. It's all about you. This is the you movement and uh, you are eventually moving yourself into your highest and greatest timeline in perfect alignment and in balance uh, wouldn't that be awesome for the world, uh, for all of us to stand in our own power uh, and shine a light out on the truth uh, and uh, on uh, standing from a perspective of uh, power because empaths can be powerful. Uh, it is a process like any other that requires training and uh, I look at it like I've, the movie Batman Begins is this is my training uh, to step into owning these uh, special superpowers uh, so that I can utilize them in my life for the highest and greatest good for not just myself but for uh, those around us and humanity as a whole. That's a lot today. Uh, I uh, send you out all of my absolute love, my compassion, and peace out. Oh, and of course, thank you uh, very much for all the likes, the shares, and subscriptions. I, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, take care.